The scene opens with Arasu, a nerd who only plays video games and is going nowhere in life. He is busy playing another shooting game, when his brother enters his room and disturbs him, causing Arasu's character to die. Irritated, Arasu heads out to hang out with his friends. His first friend, Karub, is a hot-blooded guy who is cheating on his boss's girlfriend. When his boss confronts him, Karub fights back and then heads out to catch up with Arasu. Their third friend, Shota, works in an office, and is tired of the shenanigans of the corporate world. When the three catch up, they wonder what they would do if a zombie apocalypse broke out in their city Tokyo. Karub declares that Arasu will be the one to survive the longest because he is smart and will eventually find a way to outlast zombies. Then, Karub picks up Arasu on his shoulders, and starts having fun in the middle of the road. Their scuffle causes an accident, and the cops immediately start chasing them. The trio quickly runs into a supermarket to hide from the cops. They hide in a toilet and begin waiting for the cops to show up. However, after waiting for several minutes, they come outside and find the entire supermarket deserted. They nervously run outside, and find that all the roads are empty too. It appears that Tokyo has suddenly turned into a ghost town. After some time, the face of one building lights up and says welcome players, the game will commence in a moment. Before our trio can understand anything, they see a red light coming from the distance and start running toward it. The red light is emerging from a building that says game arena up ahead. They enter the building, and are assigned one cell phone each. There, a woman named Shibuki, arrives and reveals that they now have no option but to play the game as they'll get killed by lasers if they try to escape the building. Another girl, who looks like an NPC joins them, and the game is revealed to be dead or alive, with difficulty level 3 of clubs. The game commences and all five of them enter a room where they have to choose between two doors named dead or alive in the given time frame. The NPC looking girl chooses the door that says alive, and immediately gets killed by a laser. Arasu, Karub, and Chota are devastated as they realize that they have to make a decision soon because the room will soon get engulfed in flames. The four of them enter the dead door and safely make it to the second room. The time given for choosing the right door reduces from 120 seconds to 110 seconds. When everyone realizes the seriousness of the game, they start panicking. Karub mans up this time and chooses the alive door, which is luckily the right choice. However, with time plummeting, they don't have a reliable way to find the right door and everyone hesitates to risk their lives. Karub forces Arasu to use his mind as this is just like any other game he has played over the years. Suddenly, Arasu realizes something and tells everyone to choose the dead door. It turns out to be the right choice and he explains that the building is 24 meters in length because the car parked outside which was 6 meters was occupying one-fourth of the building. And since they started from the corner of the building, by the process of elimination, the right choice this time is dead too. Arasu then moves on carrying his entire team through the game, but Chota's leg gets burned in the last room because the time limit was only 10 seconds. When they come outside, the group is given a card respective to the game they have cleared. Now, they get a notification that they have cleared the game and three days are added to their visa. A man appears there, telling them that his visa expired today and he gets killed by a laser in an instant. The group is horrified to learn that they have to keep playing the games otherwise they'll die when their visas expire. Now the scene shifts to a girl named Yusagi, who's reminiscing about climbing mountains with his father. We learn that her father is no more, and she too is stuck in this world, forced to play games. The following morning, Arasu and his group pick up things from the supermarket and learn that all devices with an electronic circuit are not working. All of them then have dinner and discuss what they were doing before it all happened. Shibuki lies that she was doing some paperwork when everyone disappeared, but in reality, she was getting close to her boss in hopes of getting a promotion. The group cannot conclude who's behind this game and just then, the burn on Chota's leg starts hurting. He is in dire need of a doctor, so Arasu and Karub decide to play another game in hopes of meeting more people. Meanwhile, the girl we saw earlier, Yusagi arrives at a game and our duo happens to join the same game too. Among the 13 participants, there is a mysterious man named Chishia. Now the difficulty level of the game is revealed to be 5 of spades. A fellow participant explains that spade is a game of physical prowess, and the number 5 indicates the difficulty. Similarly, clubs is the game of team battle, diamond is the battle of intelligence, and hearts is the game of betrayal. Now, the game is revealed to be called tag, and players are instructed to avoid the tagger while finding a hidden symbol in the building, which will deactivate the bomb. Otherwise, it explodes in 20 minutes. The game commences and Chishia goes to the top floor, so he can keep an eye on everyone. The tagger then starts moving, who is a man wearing a horse mask, and a Uzi in his hand. The tagger starts killing anyone who comes in his way, 
and NPCs start dying left right and center. Arasu figures out that the tagger can't see up because of his narrowed vision, and shouts that the tagger is on the second level, so anyone there should run. The remaining players start cooperating and tell each other tagger's location. There, Yusagi barely avoids the tagger and uses her climbing skills to jump from one floor to another. Twelve minutes pass by with seven players remaining, and the symbol is nowhere to be found. One of the survivors is a veteran named, Aegyuni, who plans to kill the tagger and asks Karub to join him. Karub goes with the man while Arasu begins looking for the hidden symbol. Aegyuni and Karub engage the tagger and get into a brutal fight with him. The tagger manages to cut Karub with a machete, but Aegyuni saves him and the two work together to ultimately take him down. On the other hand, Arasu and Chishia find the room of the hidden symbol, and slowly enter it. However, there's a second tagger waiting for them who fires at them with Uzi immediately. Chishia takes the tagger and in the scuffle, Arasu gets locked in the final room alone. However, he can't deactivate the bomb alone because two players need to push the buttons at the same time. Arasu shouts for help and Yusagi comes to his aid, pressing the button at the same time and winning the game. There, they see that the taggers were players too and they get eliminated. Ha, huh, the games are much better than squid games after all. Now Karub and Arasu return home with their visas renewed but they are immediately faced with another dilemma. Chota and Shibuki's visas are expiring soon, so they have to play a game, and Arasu and Karub decide to accompany them. All four of them make their way to a botanical garden where the next game will take place. All of them are given a headset, which when worn ties to their neck. The game's difficulty level turns out to be 7 of hearts, and the game will be hide and seek. Out of the four participants, one will be a wolf while the rest three will be lambs. The wolf status will be passed on to anyone who sees them using the goggles they are provided. And at the end of the game, whoever is the wolf, wins. This means that only one of them will get out alive, and it is the wolf who has to hide not the lambs. The group is horrified by the revelation and the wolf status gets passed on to Shibuki, and she immediately starts running away. Karub goes after her while Arasu and Chota are trying to find a safe way out of this game. Karub catches up to Shibuki and the two start fighting with each other. Karub comes out on top and takes the wolf status from her. But, Arasu calls him and the wolf status passes on to him. Surprisingly, he starts running away, and Karub attempts to go after him. Arasu finds a mirror in the garden and attempts to remove the headset, but to no avail. Karub calls him a liar and cheater over the comm, while Arasu keeps apologizing, who is now just hiding in a corner. As the time is running out, the three friends start remembering the moments they spent together and Arasu breaks down, saying if anyone should die, it should be him, and runs to find others so he can pass on the wolf status. However, Karub and Chota hide from him, essentially sacrificing themselves for Arasu. The time runs out and the headset on their heads explodes, gushing out blood on Arasu's face. Arasu is devastated to see his best friend dead, and starts sobbing over his loss. He has won the game, but at the cost of his two best friends' lives. That was it for the recap guys. Let us know in the comments if you like it. Watch out for our next recap of Alice in Borderland. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.